So I think that it is a real, real possibility. And I think Nathaniel Hackett knows something that the rest of us don't know. And that's a good thing for the New York Jets. Um, this contract that Derek Carr signed, it wasn't exactly the contract that everybody thought he was going to get. Now, it looks great on paper. The AAV is going to be about $37.5 million. This is the exact contract the Giants should be given Daniel Jones because there's a lot of money up front. And uh, after two years, if it don't work out, Get what? Guess what? We can get out of it. Yeah. That's why these contracts that these players sign basically aren't really worth the paper that they're – well, they're worth that. But they're not worth all the, the numbers that are written in those uh, contracts. And it makes the agents look good. It makes their car feel like he's making $37.5 million a year. And uh, at the end of the day, if he doesn't see the end of that contract, it, you know, maybe it will be a little bit more higher AB, AAV because of the initial money in the first two years of the contract. But I think what that shows you, it shows you how teams and players can come to an agreement that doesn't hamstring the salary cap, but also reflects a reasonable amount of money for a guy who has been around for nine years and has been a starting quarterback in this league. And Daniel Jones hasn't reached that status yet. You know, and I know Daniel Jones had a great year. And that's why I was saying yesterday, if, if, there's, if the Giants are offering somewhere around $37 million, man, he's got to sign it. Yeah, well, apparently they made a lot of progress yesterday and they're going to meet again today and they think that something is going to happen. Mike Garofolo, who a Boomer and Geo listener from NFL Network, had that, you know, they're going to meet and feel very, very close about it now. So I don't think that we're going to be in a situation any longer after seeing that where the franchise tag is used because I've been saying that both sides do not want to use that. It's not good because for... it, it kills the team. And exactly. Cap, yes. And it kills the player because, of course, he doesn't get a long term deal. And he's got to play for his, you know, sing for his son. Upper once again. So I do think that we'll hear something about that today before four o'clock with Daniel Jones. But the, the enormity, and I think that because we've talked about it so much, we've kind of forgotten how big this is, not just for the Jets, but the you know, the entire coaching staff, not just the Jet fan base, but the coaching staff. Oh, hell if, yeah. Aaron, if Aaron Rodgers doesn't come here and they've got to go to one of these other guys. I mean, Rob Sala immediately is the next guy you're thinking hot seat because if it doesn't work out with that guy, and I know that, you know, people say, well, it's Joe Douglas. He's the one who blew it with the quarterback, everything else. Okay, but it was the coaching staff that had its hands on Zach Wilson and totally screwed that up. I went over all the reasons, you know, Zach Wilson shouldn't have been playing last year and it should have been other guys, and they continued to force him down all of our throats to the point where he was completely ruined. If they end up with a guy like Ryan Tannehill, Andy Dalton, I'm not a Garoppolo fan one of those guys and it doesn't work out or Zach Wilson has to play because one of those guys get hurt Rob Sal's not going to be the coach next year you know by the way I was thinking that uh, the first time that Derek Carr heard somebody tell him over there floor and park that he could be a hall of famer if he signed with the Jets it was like uh man I can't I can't trust these guys <laughs> yeah. I can't trust these guys at all so, plus you know he does have a relationship and a very good one obviously with Dennis Allen the head coach of the Saints because he was the first coach that drafted him yeah and you know he you know Dennis Allen was gushing yesterday over the signing of Derek Carr and it it seems natural I thought maybe uh Carolina would be a good spot for for him but maybe Carolina now is going to pivot and you know they're really looking at the draft and maybe they'll go after one of those younger quarterbacks that are coming out at the top of the draft if one of them fall to them or they may have to trade up to go get one of them but uh you know the guy who i'm really really happy for is geno smith i mean geno smith signed a three-year 110 million dollar contract he's 33 years old if you would have told me that he was going to sign a hundred million dollar contract five years ago, I would have said you are out of your mind. Well, even five years ago, I mean, before the season this year, when he was fighting with Drew Locke to be the starting quarterback, and we thought that there was a chance that they were tanking because they were going to have those two guys compete to be the starter, and he takes them to the playoffs, is comeback player of the year, and then gets paid. I mean, yeah, obviously five years ago it seemed like a miracle, but even before this season, as recently as August, nobody believed that this could happen. Think, well, think about it. He had uh, 34 touchdown passes through the years of 2013 and 2021, and then he threw 30 touchdown passes last year. I mean, you know, you see some of the throws that he makes. We, we can watch it on CBS Sports Network here, and you can see that this is what the Giants want to see out of Daniel Jones. Now, I will say that this perseverance thing with, you know, he grew up. You know, when he got here, he was completely immature, much like Sam, uh, Sam Darnold was, much like Mark Sanchez was, Zach much Wilson. like Zach Wilson yeah. is. And it, sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes you got to be a place where there's no pressure and you can learn and you can kind of, you know, create the friendships and the respect in the locker room. And that's exactly 
what Geno Smith did. So I, I'm happy for that kid. I, that, he deserves the money. He, he really does. And again, it, it kind of, when you think back to his time with the Giants, you know, Ben McAdoo wanted to throw him out there. And it got ugly because Eli was here. Yeah. You now, Ben McAdoo wanted to draft Patrick Mahomes. If Daniel Jones signs a new long-term contract, then Dave Gettleman got it right. If Daniel, if uh, Saquon Barkley ends up staying here, then Dave Gettleman got it right. I know, I know that. I, the, the Saquon one I'm going to push back on because I still don't think you should draft a running back number two overall. You could have the same I, exact I, production from a guy and sign him to a long-term deal and take him in the third round. Um, within there's tons of examples with running backs. I mean, the second overall pick for Saquon Barkley. But, but at that time, you ridiculous. have to understand like the, the the reason why he did what he did. The reason why he did what he did is because they were trying to help Eli Manning out towards the end of his career. Yeah. They were trying to bring in playmakers. And in, in his rookie year, he was good. Yeah, he was, was really good. He was an offensive rookie of the year. Right. So, I mean, you know, that that validates the, 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 the selection and why the selection was made. You know, we all tend to forget why the selection was made and, and how, it, how well it turned out for Saquon. And, you know, and whatever you want to talk about, the, you know, Al hates talking about the offensive line of the Giants and Eli Manning and all that other stuff. You're going to have him for 100 years. I, I understand all that. But there were reasons why Gettleman did what he did. And here we are, you know, five years later, and they're trying to resign Daniel Jones to a contract extension. So are you sitting here telling me now that Dave Gettleman got it right? With Daniel Jones? I mean, he's had one good season. He's had a lot of injuries and he's going to get paid because Brian Dable was able to unlock him. So he's not as big of a disaster as we thought he was going to be. It wasn't a total flop, but I mean, Daniel Jones is going to have to continue to build off of what happened last year for me to say that he absolutely got it right. What if he never makes the playoffs ever again? I mean, I can't see here based off of one year to say that Daniel yeah. jo Daniel Jones is striking gold for Dave Gettleman after one good season. I, I know that, but he, Daniel Jones is going to get paid. He is going to get paid. And and if you are going to get paid, just like Gino got paid, just like Derek Carr got paid, and, and Daniel will get paid somewhere around there, uh, you got to say then then the draft pick was the right draft pick. I, I It's not, again, I, I don't know what to say other than, you know, there were other mistakes made. Remember, he didn't hire the coaches. You know, that's ownership who hires coaches. Yeah. You know, and whether it be, you know, uh, Shermer or whether it be McAdoo or whether it be Joe Judge, that's all that's all that, you know, above the pay grade of the GM. Now, the GM's involved in all of that. But, you know, giving his, you know, I guess his expertise, his point of view and what he thinks. But it really comes down to ownership hiring those uh, those coaches. That, that's what that's what it yeah. is. So and unfortunately, you know, and I know G Gettleman was uh, bombastic and very, uh, you know, aggressive with defending his picks and the hog mollies and all that other stuff. But at the end of the day, all these guys are staying here. Well, not all these well, guys. Well, is probably There's, the biggest. The, but Galladay's the biggest mess. The other one, by the way. DeAndre Baker was a horrendous uh, one. Well, uh, yeah. Nate Solder was horrendous. I mean, I, I'm not yeah, here. Yeah, but again, why were they doing what they were doing at the time? What does it matter? But I, what, I'll tell you, <laughs> you, you make, make a terrible mistake. You make a terrible mistake. So when Joe Douglas got the, the Jets, basically his job was to tear it down yeah. and to rebuild it. When Dave Gettleman got here, his job was to try to support Eli Manning and keep and, Eli right. Manning on the field. And he made some really bad decisions and, and in he, doing and so. He, and he tried to, he, he signed the best offensive tackle at the time that was on the market. And his name happened to be Nate Solder, who was coming off a Super, super Bowl appearances yeah. with the New England Patriots. And when he was signed, everybody around here thought it was the greatest signing right. ever. We, we tend to forget those things. I got, you know, as, as a Ranger fan, I could sit here and I could say, you know, when we signed Panarin and he decided to take less money to play for the Rangers, it's turned out to be great. He's turned out to be a great Ranger. He's turned out to do everything that we thought he was going to do. He gets, you know, you get frustrated every now and again watching uh, the bread man, but the bread man has delivered the bread for the most part since he signed his big contract. So you made the right decision. Yeah. So not every decision is the right decision by these general managers. Some of them, you know, take a shot in the dark. Like Makai Becton, to me, is a shot in the dark. Is that kid ever going to come back and be the kid that he was his freshman year? Yeah, but I mean, I mean you can't. I mean, 
A shot in the dark in the first round? Unfortunately, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not what you're supposed all, to do as a general manager. Yeah, but I think they're all shots in the dark. You just never know how a player, and especially if a player is going to get injured. You, you, yeah. you can't predict those things. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really interested in going back and trying to rewrite the legacy of Dave Gettleman as a general manager. I mean, at this point, I just want to see them I'm continue all, to grow positively. Right, and I think that they had to make a general manager change. They had to make a head coach change. I think that they've got the right guys in place and they're on the precipice of competing yearly in this conference. I'm and just, that's not, the important thing. I, I'm not fighting with you over the history of Dave Gettleman and Gi Giants. I'm just going back because some people tend to forget who made these draft picks or why these players are here. And yes, they finally got the right coach. They, mm -hmm. they got the coach that got everybody on the same page. And don't forget the defensive coordinator who was really important this year, especially with the amount of money that was being spent on defense. Very little. Sure. Compared to what had been spent on offense. Yeah. I mean, I also think that he created, like, the, the players did not like Dave Kettleman. Not at all. And, and and that was another thing that was going on there. They didn't trust him. They didn't like him. He was too old school. He didn't walk around the practice field. It just wasn't working. The whole thing just wasn't working. You, you know, the amazing thing is he signs Bradbury, and Bradbury ends up on Philadelphia, and they go to the Super Bowl. Sure. He, for whatever reason, you know, they had to get rid of him. Joe Shane had to get rid of him. Well, yeah, for mean, cap reasons. That's what it right, was. Exactly. He couldn't keep him. And, and now, and now Bradbury. But guess, be, guess who created those cap problems? Uh, Dave Gettleman. Okay. So, yeah, we go back and forth all day, but I don't think I, anybody cares. I, I don't think anybody cares either. <laughs> you know but what I'm saying? But at the end of the, out. I know. But at the end of the day, it's, it's about the validation of picking a guy because the Giants are going to end up having to pay Daniel Jones. So they have until 4 o'clock today to make some sort of decision. As, as to whether or not they, they are going to give him the exclusive franchise tag, give him a new contract, or give him the, the non-exclusive franchise tag, where then he can go out and negotiate with anybody, and then the Giants can match it, or they could say, see ya, and we'll take two first-round draft picks. Yeah, let me ask you, just because we're talking about quarterbacks, you said that, you know, the validation of Daniel Jones being drafted now because he's going to get a contract is the thing that you say it's, it was a great draft pick, which I don't I didn't say it was a great draft pick. I'm just saying if you're going to keep him and you're going to give him another contract and your contract's going to be close to $200 million, I'm saying that's, that's validation but, but, that he was a, a pick uh, where he was supposed to yeah, be Yeah, but picked. I mean, like, see, not everybody who gets the money, though, like uh, he's getting the money off of, of what he did last year and what they believe he can do in the future. Do you believe that all the money that Kirk Cousins was given has been validated since he's been up there or not? I think his numbers basically speak for themselves. Yeah, but what, what is it about, though? You know what I'm saying? But like I'm, they brought I'm, him in after an NFC championship game. He never got back there, you know, and he's had some numbers. And I told you, I really loved what he did this past year. But, like, it's not just about validating the contract. It's, a, I mean, to how me, how many games a day? Uh, we uh, really need to see these teams. Like, you got to win. You got to give your team a chance to win a Super Bowl or at least get to a Super Bowl. That's well, really what it's well, about. I would say That's that where Kirk, the validation Kirk, comes while in. Kirk Cousins gives their team a chance to win. You know, what happened to Case Keenum after that whole thing? Yeah, I mean, he was he was he was gone. I wanted to bring him back, but the point is that you know Daniel Jones in this in this past year got into the second round of the playoffs. That's as far as Kirk Cousins has gotten the Minnesota Vikings as the second round of the playoffs one time and ended up losing to the San Francisco 49ers where you didn't feel like they were close. So to me, like when you, I hear validation, validation is being the leader of a team that you believe really can go to a Super Bowl How and have a chance to win it. I mean. My question to you then would be, how good was the Viking defense? It was terrible, but the quarterback is the most important play. And it wasn't always terrible. It wasn't terrible back in that year where they beat the Saints down in New Orleans and then went up to San Francisco and got their asses kicked. Defense wasn't bad then. It was bad this past year. It wasn't always the worst defense in football. Last year it was. I just, when you're the quarterback, you're telling me, is this signing? Like for, for Derek Carr and the Saints, what is validation for for that is the fact that he got the contract because he got paid by another team. Does it make the Vegas Raiders look silly? Does it validate the fact that Derek Carr was someone who thinks he could still play and because he got that contract? It was validated. No, the work has to be done. We got to see him take that, especially in the NFC South. We got to see that guy in the playoffs every single freaking year that he's under contract. What also goes to show you just how desperate teams are. Yeah. You know, and, and number one, to keep their quarterbacks like Daniel Jones and uh, Geno Smith. And number two is to go after another quarterback, kind of like Derek Carr and the Saints. So it is a quarterback-driven league. There's no question about that. I, I can't sit here and 
you know, I know how you feel about the Vikings, and I know how you feel about Kirk Cousins. The guy stands in there. The guy shows up every game. Has he missed a game as a, as a Viking? Yeah, he had very few. I mean, I, not last year he didn't. Right, so I, one of the things that, you know, Giant fans love about Eli is that Eli never missed a game. Sure. He was always there every Sunday, every Monday, every Thursday night, every Saturday, whenever the game was played, he was there. And much like Kirk Cousins, who got his ass kicked this year. Yeah. You know, Eli used to hang in there, and he used to get his ass kicked, and Giant fans could appreciate that, and he could lead his team to wins. How many how many fourth quarter comebacks does Kirk Cousins yeah, have? Well, la- well, last year he had he had a ton last year. Prior to that, it was a big problem. But the reason I bring up these guys is I all feel like they're in the same type of conversation. Derek Carr, Kirk Cousins, Daniel Jones. They're, and I know those Kirk Cousins and, and Derek Carr are older than Daniel Jones, but they're all kind of that same guy that like gets you to the certain level. So that's why I asked the question, what is validation for those guys? You know, for, for me as a fan, it's seeing them, you know, lead their team into an AFC or an NFC championship game and being like, man, like if he makes enough plays here, they can go to the Super Bowl. Then I'll be like, that guy's worth it. The interesting thing is going to be. Here, here it is. It's like T. Higgins in Cincinnati. Yeah. He's going into the last year of his contract, $4 million made. That's that's what his contract says. He's not a $4 million player. He's already outkicked his contract 50 times over. He should be a 16 to $20 million player. Yeah. He should be a wide receiver one or 1A for some team other than the Bengals if they can't afford to pay him. The question is, for him, is he going to take less money to stay in Cincinnati because he knows he's got the great quarterback, or is he going to go after the dollars and go somewhere else, maybe with a medium quarterback? Like if you were T Higgins and the giants came a knocking on the door of the Bengals and said, Hey, we'd like to make a trade. We'll give you our number one for T Higgins. Would you do that? If you were uh, T Higgins and would you sign a, a say eighteen million dollar a year contract? Oh, absolutely, with the Giants to play with Daniel Jones. Yeah, w- without a doubt, because I can give you all the examples of these other guys who have gone somewhere else when they've been with better quarterbacks to get money, and a lot of it happened last year. Uh, Devontae Adams, that was a big one. Tyreek Hill, well, had Tyreek to get Hill still had a great game, a great season though. He had a great. Well, but, both guys had great but, seasons. But, I know, but the point was that they had to trade him, right? It was like he wasn't taking less money to stay with Patrick Mahomes. They had to trade him somewhere else to get that money. Yeah, but now the question is like, is T Higg? What's T Higgins going to do? Same what's thing what? as those guys. One hundred percent. He has to, right? Well, say, of course. What do you think he's going to see? All his peers making twenty million dollars a year, and he's floundering in Cincinnati. He gets a whole bunch of Fs by the Players <laughs> Association for treatment of families and facilities and nutrition, just so we can play with Joe Burrow in a freezing cold Rust Belt city. What are you freaking kidding me? Cincinnati is a very nice city. <laughs> it's a very nice. City. I'm sure. Don't it is. don't don't uh, underrate the city. I'm, I'm just telling you, there's a lot of other places. You know that. I know that. Well, especially you got to go where the money. Is and, and it's his time to get paid, but yeah. uh, you know, just to get back to Daniel Jones, real quick, um, you know, today is this is the wrecking hour, this is where he and his family have got to sit down and say, you know what, this is what we're taking, and I it's got to be similar to what Derek Carr got, it's got to be similar, it's got to be a very similar contract. They maybe, maybe they go five years, I don't know, uh, maybe there's a little bit more guaranteed money up front, I, I'm not really sure, but I think that that contract right around that number. The AAV number of thirty seven five, you know, is fair. Would be fair. Well, the market's given, been set. Given the market, yes. Yeah, the market's been set now by Derek Carr and Geno Smith, and there was no reference point for this particular year with quarterback contracts. And now you've seen it. So he's not going to get that much more than those guys. He's just not. So his agents have to be a little bit more realistic with that number. And I do believe now we're going to see a deal uh, with Daniel Jones and the Giants before four. Well, they, they can tag him and they can still negotiate. If they put the ex- exclusive franchise tag, they can protect themselves, but they'll have to get under the salary cap because that will have an impact on the salary sure. cap. They may end up having to cut people before March mm-hmm. 15th, yeah. which we already saw starting yesterday. I didn't think it was going to start yesterday. I thought it would start a little bit later this week, but we're already starting to see guys get cut. Now, I don't know how many of these guys are being designated June 2nd cuts because each team is allowed to pick two players. Yeah. They can cut them now and they can say it's retroactive June 2nd, and then that relieves some of the salary cap pressure. Um, But a bunch of guys got cut yesterday, and here's one that's very interesting. 
it sounds like Orlando Brown, the big left tackle for the uh, or the right right left tackle, I think left tackle, yeah, for the Kansas City Chiefs is not going to be franchise tagged, and he's going to be a free agent if the uh, Chiefs and he do not come up with a contract. All right, that is huge. 